you do not need to know advanced market structure. All you need to know are the swing points, which are your swing highs and your swing lows and where they are formed off of. A lot of people overcomplicate their trading by marking long term highs, long term lows, short term highs, short term lows and intermediate term highs and intermediate term lows. But all it is are your swing points, where they formed, are what key levels they are formed off of and what the market direction is currently telling you. So let's recap on what a swing high and swing low is. Your swing high is formed off of three candles. Here, if you focus on these three candles, your swing point is always formed off of three candles. Your first candle has the wick that is lower than your second wick's candle. However, the upper wick of this second candle is higher than the third candle's wick. So in conclusion, the middle candle in your three candle formation, it has the highest upper wick. And that is where you have your swing high. Now, it's the same thing for swing low. Here, if you focus on one, two, and three, your one and three candle the bottom wick of that is higher than your number two's bottom wick's candle. And your number two's bottom wick candle is the lowest. So that is where you have your swing low. Marking this out. This is your swing high. And this is your swing low. So this is the simplified version of advanced market structure. Depending on where these swing points form, the swing low and the swing high, depending on what key levels they form over, for example, this bearish order block, that will determine the specific characteristics of that swing high and swing low. The end idea is, if a swing high or swing low forms of a key higher time frame PDRA level, that will make the swing high or swing low very high probability and you do not want to see it get broken through. The only times you want to see it get broken through is when it is opposing your higher time frame market direction. So in this scenario, you could clearly see that we are bearish on the daily time frame, right? So any swing lows that get formed, you should expect to see it be taken away. And these swing lows that form are simply your sell side liquidity. They are your draws on liquidity and your targets for price to take lower. Any swing highs that get formed off of key higher time frame PD array levels, such as this bearish order block, it should ideally stay protected to support price lower. And that is the extremely simplified version. You do not need to know any advanced market structure and go through every single trade marking out your long term highs, long term lows, etc. That is essentially all it is. So let's begin with more examples. If you look at your first example here, what is your higher time frame direction? On a monthly, right, bearish. And you would expect rebalancing old efficiencies before seeking new liquidity to continue the bearish direction. And that is what you're currently getting here with your monthly time frame. Prices come back into this minor imbalance here, right? And it is showing you displacement lower, giving you a market structure break on the monthly time frame. So on the monthly, your higher time frame direction is bearish. This is where you will drill down onto the weekly time frame. Look at what it does. The weekly time frame is supporting the bearish price action that you had on your monthly time frame. What does price come into? Price comes into this imbalance. And what gets formed here? Remember, one, two, three. Your first candle and your third candle, the upper wick of them both has a lower wick than the upper wick on the second candle. So what does that make this? That makes this your swing high. This swing high, the key thing here is that it is formed off of your weekly imbalance, which becomes your key level. So ideally, this high should stay protected. The price breaks through this high. Not only is it breaking through the high and giving you another break to the upside, but it is also disrespecting this key level, which is your premium array. So essentially, it's disrespecting two overlapping premium arrays, and that is more than enough to determine a market reversal to go from bearish to bullish. So this high you wouldn't want to see get violated on the weekly time frame. Overall, when you drop down onto the lower time frame, in this instance being the daily, this swing high over here becomes your extreme swing high because it is formed off of the higher time frame key level. So here, when you look for trades on the daily or look for any trade ideas, you could expect for this high to stay protected. Even if price comes all the way up to there before it continues lower, you shouldn't be afraid of price taking out this high because this high was formed off of a weekly imbalance and it is in line with your monthly bearish direction. So ideally this high should stay protected in the long run. Now, if I keep paying price out, look what you have here. Relative to the time frame that you're on, here you have a daily imbalance. What gets created in this daily imbalance? You have a swing high that gets created here, which is just one pip higher than the previous swing high, right? So here, swing high. First candle, third candle's upper wick is lower than the second candle's upper wick. So this becomes your swing high. Now, because this swing high was formed off of this daily's imbalance, right, is relative to the time frame that you're on, on the daily time frame, this swing high should ideally stay protected if price was to continue lower 
and follow your daily bearish direction. If price takes out this swing high on a daily, this is where you could include your higher time frame as well because when price takes out this swing high, that becomes your daily market structure shift. And what would you expect? This higher time frame extreme swing high should become your next target. Right, so you could already see that on a lower time frame, depending on the swing highs and swing lows and what gets violated, you could already have an anticipation of what swing highs and swing lows on the higher time frame, being your weekly and monthly, which ones are likely to get violated. If I drop back up to the weekly, you can see that here you have a swing low as well. And the thing is, this swing low was formed of this bullish order block. So this has the same characteristics as this swing high. The only thing that determines whether this swing low or this swing high is going to be the one that gets violated is dependent on your higher time frame direction. If the higher time frame we are bearish, then it's likely that this swing low is going to get violated. If we are bullish, then of course it is likely that this high is going to get violated. That is your first confluence. Your second confluence is again this daily time frame, which is the lower time frame relative to your weekly time frame. You follow the same principle. What swing highs and swing lows have formed? Where have they formed off of, which makes them high probability? And depending on which one gets violated, that is where you could have an anticipation, i.e., your early sign of which extreme swing high or swing low on the higher time frame is going to get violated. So here, you have this swing low here. But this swing low wasn't formed off of a key level as this swing high. So this swing high becomes higher probability, right? And it's likely that in line with your daily bearish direction, this swing low is going to give way. And once this swing low gives way, what could you expect? For price to continue lower and take out the next higher time frame swing low. So if you keep paying price out, that's exactly what it does. Now, a new swing high has been formed. Look what you have here. This imbalance, swing high. Right? Yeah. This swing high rebalances that imbalance before it continues lower and seeks new liquidity. So now, your next key swing high becomes this swing high. Because if price breaks through that swing high, what is that? That becomes your market structural break. You don't need to wait for this swing high to get broken through before you determine a market reversal. Because this is your next swing high. So if you keep paying price out, that stays protected and the same thing happens again. A new swing high gets created off of a new key level. You have this bearish order block or mitigation block and again you get the same thing. One, two, three. Your second candle's wick is the highest of the normal. And this becomes your new swing high formed off of this new key level. It gives you another break. And this ideally you want to see protected if you wanted to continue lower. And that is exactly what you get there. And it takes out this higher time frame swing low as we anticipated because it is opposing your higher time frame market bearish direction. Now, as we took out this swing low, what could we expect? A possible retracement, right? But again, you have this swing high formed off a new key level. So this becomes your new key swing high. Bearing in mind, these previous swing highs that we had marked out, they are not so important to us anymore in determining market reversals. You always use the immediate swing highs and swing lows when determining market reversals. Once we've passed those stages, these old swing highs simply just becomes your targets. If price was to reverse from here. So as we took out this swing low on the higher time frame, this is where we could anticipate a retracement. If price retraces to here and this swing high is still intact, then on the daily, we could still anticipate for it to continue lower. However, on the daily, if price takes out that swing high, what does that give you? Price swept this sell liquidity, created a swing high over here. If price displaces through that, that gives you your market structure break on the daily time frame. And you could possibly anticipate for a deeper retracement because you should always be wary of what the higher time frame is currently showing you. Because on a daily, if we have just consistent lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, what that looks like on the higher time frame is just one prolonged expansion to the downside. But you know that price can't just consistently expand, no matter what time frame. It always has to expand and retrace, expand, retrace. It can't just expand all in one go. So that's why on a daily, once we've swept out this extreme swing low, you could anticipate a market reversal from here. If price breaks this immediate swing high that we had marked out, you could anticipate a deeper retracement, possibly taking out these buy side liquidity, accumulate more shorts before continuing lower. And that is simply just your retracement on the higher time frame. Even though on the daily, that is a full reversal to go bullish, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is going to go bullish all the way and take out this extreme swing high 
which is on a daily, which is your higher time frame to swing high because your higher time frame, like I've said, is bearish. So let's see what price does, whether it disrespects the swing high or it protects it and it carries on to lower. As you can see, it disrespects that swing high. So that becomes your market structure break. What can you expect? For price to target this bearish order block before this buy side liquidity and then possibly this buy side liquidity. If you go into the weekly from here, this is where your multi time frame analysis comes into play. What key PDA array levels can you see on the weekly time frame? You see this bearish order block. Price could possibly retrace into that before continuing lower. So going back down onto the daily. If we keep playing price out, see what it does. Look for your swing lows and swing highs that gets formed. Yeah. You have the swing high that gets formed. Where does it get formed off of? This rejection block. And here you have the swing low that gets formed. However, this swing low, unlike the other swing lows and swing highs that we've had so far, it doesn't get formed off of a PD array. So this swing low, right, it could be used as inducement if price wanted to retrace, take out that, and then continue higher. This doesn't necessarily determine a market reversal. Unless, of course, this swing low caused the break of this swing high that was formed off of this key level. And then it breaks down lower. That, then that becomes your market reversal. But if price was here, where it is at now, and then it just goes lower, that isn't a market reversal because this swing low isn't significant. It isn't formed off of any key level. So that could just be inducement before it continues higher. So let's keep playing price up. As you can see, it breaks past this key swing high. So that shows you that on the daily time frame, we are still favoring longs here. Price comes up to here. Look what it does. This is where you could anticipate for possibly a reversal because it taps into your weekly bearish order block. And here, look what gets formed. One, two, three. A swing low gets formed. Where does it get formed off of? This very small imbalance but it's an imbalance nonetheless. The reason why this imbalance is valid is because you didn't have a full body closure past that imbalance. So this becomes your significant swing low. If price breaks through that swing low, that just becomes your market structure shift. And that's where you could anticipate for a possible reversal. As you can see, the buy side liquidity here became targets to accumulate more short positions for price to continue lower and realign with your high time frame bearish direction. So if I clear this for now, Remember, this extreme swing high should still stay protected because on the high time frame, it's telling you a completely different story. We are still bearish. If this swing high gets violated, then that is where you could anticipate for the high time frame to switch direction to go from bearish to bullish. So, keep playing price up. What do you get? Heavy displacement past this significant swing low. That is your market structure shift. Right, and the whole thing just repeats. Price retraces into this bearish order block. Swing high. This is your immediate swing high. You do not want to see that get violated if price wants to continue lower. It gives you another break. If you look here, after price took out this extreme swing low, it creates another extreme swing low. Because this was formed off of a key PD array in the form of this old low. And now, your new higher time frame swing point moves from here to this swing high. Because on the lower time frame, you had a market structure shift. And this swing high, one, two, three, was formed off of a key higher time frame PD array level in the form of this bearish order block. So, as we are still bearish, you want to see this swing high get protected and this swing low give way. So, that becomes your next target. So, also liquidity, going back down onto daily, a new swing high gets formed and it gives you another break. This swing high was formed off of this imbalance, or if you want to use this, bearish order block but either way it, it was formed off of a key level price comes up look what it does even though it takes out that swing high look at the bodies of it all it done was wick above that swing high to accumulate shorts before distributing it lower and as you can see after it swept that this just becomes your new significant swing high so on the daily this swing high should support price lower and it should stay protected which is also backed up by the fact that we had this heavy displacement and another market structure break. So now this salsa liquidity should act as a magnet, right? Price is constantly protecting swing highs and disrespecting swing lows. This swing low should give way, and it does, before it takes out that salsa liquidity. So that pretty much concludes this video. The first time you watch it, it might not make the most sense, but I guarantee you, if you keep watching it, 
eventually it will become very easy to understand and see on the charts. We didn't cover any entries in this video because I want you guys to solidify your understanding of the overall theory before we actually apply it on the top down analysis all the way down to your entries. But essentially all it is is identifying at what key levels are your swing highs and swing lows forming, what the current market direction on the higher time frame is currently showing you and that is where you could place certain significance on particular swing highs and swing lows. If your swing low formed off a of random level, it is likely that that is just going to be used as liquidity for targets or inducement. And if your swing highs or swing lows have formed off of key levels, whether that's higher time frame key levels or relative to your time frame that you're on, if it is in line with your high time frame direction, ideally you want to see that stay protected and any opposing swing points should become your targets. And with that in mind, it's an extremely simple concept once you're able to master it. And you wouldn't need to overcomplicate your trading with advanced market structure, such as labeling certain swing highs and swing lows as your intermediate term points, short term points, or long term points. I hope you guys found that video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. And like always, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.